feel goodness towards us, Lord, in spite of our propensity to sin and fall short of the mark. We thank you, Lord, that your love is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So please, sir, uh, give us a desire within us, Lord, to be all that you have created us to be. And may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Christ Jesus' name and for his sake we do pray. Amen and amen. These are your announcements for today, October 3rd, 2021. Today is the first Sunday of October. Pastor Campbell will be administering the Lord's Supper after the morning message. So please gather your elements. Work on our infrastructure project continues to progress. And thanks for your continued prayers as we look forward to a quick and successful completion. Please remember, once we reopen, proof of vaccination and the wearing of masks will be required, along with safe seating due to the resurgence of the Delta mutation. 
If you need a copy of our health protocol, please advise our church secretary, and she will gladly mail you out a copy electronically or put it in the US, United States Postal Service. Thanks for your continued pledge support of our infrastructure project. If you need additional information regarding our pledging efforts, a copy of the document explaining our efforts can be provided to you, again, via email or the U.S. Postal Service. Again, you can contact our church secretary for your copy. And if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. We will continue to have our biweekly prayer call on Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Prayer leader on Monday morning is Deacon John DuBose, and on Friday morning is my beloved brother, Deacon Major Carter. Midweek services will begin at 11 a.m. promptly on Wednesdays, starting with a review of the weekly Sunday school lesson by the chairman of our deacon board, Brother David Smith, followed by uh, prayer requests and praise reports and prayer for our sick and shut-in members, and concluding with the Bible study from the Gospel according to Luke by our beloved pastor, Dr. Ellie Campbell. Funeral services for Sister Connie Thompson will be this coming Friday, October 8th at 12 noon at the Montecito Chapel and Memorial Park there in Colton, California. The address is 3520 East Washington Avenue, Colton, California. Again, Sister Thompson's services begin at 12 noon on Friday, October the 8th. Also, we want to, before our associate minister comes forth, we want to ask that you continue to pray for Sister Lucas's sister, Yolanda, who had to return to the hospital and is in ICU. Do continue to remember our brother Tracy Anderson in your prayers. And uh, uh, brother Richard Dixon also is in continual need of our prayers. And by all means, do not forget our super seniors who are, member, who are members of our church fellowship. And also, our beloved Pastor Dr. L.A. Campbell. And we would like to wish Sister Grace Pure for a happy 92nd birthday. She celebrated her birthday a few days ago. So happy birthday, Sister Purifor. These are your announcements for this morning. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Good morning. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the same God that stood on the scaffolds of nothing and called this world into existence, who, forsh who fashioned man out of the dust of the earth and broke the breath of life in his nostrils, and man became a living soul. We come to you now, Father, and we come in the precious and the most powerful name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and is our Savior. Father, we thank you for allowing us to come to you this morning, Father, but we come with humble hearts and bowed heads. We thank you for being the God that you are, the only wise God, the one that sits high and looks low. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to be here together, all on one accord and all in one place. We pray, God, that the Spirit will move today and it will touch us heart to heart and breast to breast. And we will become one in you. So we thank you, Lord. We've heard the petitions of those, Father, that are sick, Father, and those that are shut in among us, Father. But those are just a few we know of. You are God that is omniscient. You know all things. You know all that are down today, those that are sick, even those, Father, that are on the, the bed of affliction. 
You know it, Father. We ask that you would touch them in a mighty and special way. We know that, Father, when you touch them, Father, they know your presence is there. So we thank you. For your words say the prayers of the righteous shall heal the sick. And so we come into you now, Father. We thank you and we love you. We can't do anything without you, Lord. So as we go into our service today, Father, we ask your blessing upon it. We ask you to give us strength, Father, to, to endure your word today. We ask, Father, that you would strengthen those that would sing these songs from on high. That they would sing them, Father, to you and you only. We ask, Father, that when the word is broken today, when the bread of life is broken unto us, that you will give the preacher man power to preach your word with conviction. If there be one among us, Father, that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, we ask, God, that they will come yielding unto thee. So thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, those that in, in presence day, whether it be physical or on the media, we ask, God, you will bless every home represented today. Touch that home, Father. Bless it, Father, from the littlest to the biggest, the oldest to the youngest. Touch them now, Father, in a mighty and special way. Send your love, Father, to those, Father, that are in bereavement today, Father. Comfort them in their time. We know you're a God that makes no mistakes. So we thank you, Lord. Now, Fathers, we, we continue in our service today. We ask that you let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Our strength and our redeemer. And for his sake we say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Jesus, I give you the glory, I give you the honor, I give you the praise. Jesus, I give you the glory, I give you the honor, I give you the praise. I come to worship you. Oh Lord, I come to worship you. Jesus, I give you the glory. I give you the honor. I give you the praise. Jesus, I give you the glory. I give you the honor. I give you the praise. I come to worship you. Oh Lord, I come to worship you. Hallelujah, I give you the glory. Hallelujah, I give you the praise. Hallelujah. I give you the honor, I come to worship you. Oh Lord, I come to worship you. Hallelujah, I give you the glory. Hallelujah, I give you the praise. Hallelujah. I give you the honor, I come to worship you. Oh Lord, I come to worship you. Hallelujah, I give you the glory, hallelujah. I give you the praise, hallelujah. I give you the honor, I come to worship you. Oh Lord, I come to worship you. Oh, I come, I come to worship you. Oh Lord, I come to worship you.
Good morning again. This is a time of giving. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said it this way. He says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down and shaken together shall men give unto their bosom. Giving is a part of worship and we pray that you have a heart to give. Paul says, as a man so purpose in his heart, that's how he should give. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come. We come, Father, because your words say we could come. And we thank you, Father, for our worship thus far. We thank you for blessing us thus far. We know, Father, that you will bless us in the future, but at this present time, we come to bless you with our offerings. So we ask God that you will accept these offerings and God that you will multiply them sevenfold. We thank you, Father, for those that are giving, those that have the heart to give. Father, the one that didn't give today, prick his heart and bless him that he'll give the next time. We thank you, Lord, and we can't do anything without you, Father. So we love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all the saints say, amen, amen. amen. And amen. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you.
my joy. Jesus, Jesus, you are, you are the, center the center of my joy. Jesus, Jesus, you are, you are the center of my joy. Thank the Lord this morning. Grace is mercy. Coming again to the house of worship on the Lord's Day morning. Thank God for all of you who are live streaming, doing the live streaming, those who are here today. Thank God for the crew, for our singers, musicians, our preachers. We pray for us, we pray for you. God will continue to see us through this virus. Things may be getting better. We trust that it will be soon. We'll have the infrastructure finished at our church. We'll be able to think about returning to our worship services on the Lord's Day and on Wednesdays. We're going to the book of 1 John. The old man John writing to believers living in Ephesus at the close of the apostolic century. Today is 1 John chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. 1 John chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. John talks about levels of spiritual maturity. Let me read verse 12. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. 14. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you have strong. The word of God abides in you. You have overcome the wicked one. Kenneth Weiss, the Bible scholar, writes that these three, these destinations, children, father, and young men, could be used to represent different ages or groups or stages of maturity in the Christian community. What we write seems to be what John is doing. John is writing to groups in the church at different levels of spiritual maturity. This is the spiritual state of maturity John visions his readers to be in. Remember, John is writing to people he knows. Is well acquainted with him, yet this must be true of every Christian congregation. There are levels of spiritual maturity and physical maturity, emotional maturity in the church. We have children who are believers. We have super seniors, as well as adults and young adults and the teenagers. So there are levels of spiritual progress among believers. These levels mentioned in these verses are probably one group of believers in the church. 
fellowship on several levels of their spiritual growth. Children can refer to those who are newly born again believers or those who have been Christians a short time. Then John is writing to those who are fathers or more mature believers who have been longer time as Christians have come to a, a stronger level of spiritual progress. Young men are those who are younger believers than the fathers but demonstrate their spiritual growth by the way they are dealing with the evil presented to them by Satan, the evil one. John MacArthur writes, I tend to agree with him. These are stages that represent levels of spiritual maturity in the fellowship of believers. Several levels of spiritual growth among believers. In the fellowship with the church, there are always levels of spiritual maturity. We are not at the same level of our spiritual growth. This is why we help one another. We are patient with one another, knowing that we are not at the same places spiritually. We do this by loving one another as believers in Christ Jesus. As we all move towards Christ's likeness, we are all on the same journey that's to become more like Jesus Christ. Peter in his final epistle, commands Christians to grow in grace yeah. and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is in the present tense, in the imperative mood. Mm -hmm. We are commanded to grow in grace, yeah. to continue to grow, to grow continually on our way to spiritual, on spiritual progress. Mm -hmm. We are victorious in our Christian living by growing. The only way you escape the clutches of Satan is by growing yeah. in grace, in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul, his letter to the Philippians, encourages them to do what he is doing, to press towards the goal, the mark of the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus, yeah. forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, knowing that he's not there yet. Paul knows that he is not already perfect, but he wants to lay hold on that for which Christ had laid hold on him. Yeah. All that Christ has arrested him to do, he wants to arrest that, lay hold on that. Yeah. The Apostle John tells his readers why he's writing, to whom he is writing. This is where John sees his readers' spiritual level. This way he sees them. John is not finding fault with where they are spiritually, but he knows that they remain steadfast. They will continually progress on the path of spiritual maturity. In our spiritual growth, we are where we are, but the question remains, are we growing spiritually regardless of where we are and what level we may be on. That's the question. Are you growing? Not your level, but are you growing from the level that you're on? Are you making progress in your, on the Christian journey? John writes to little children. Verse 12. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Because your sins are forgiven. Sin is in the perfect tense. Yeah. These sins have been forgiven in the past and remain forgiven in the present. Right. This is a permanent state of forgiveness. Sins forgiven. The word little children is the word technion. It means little children are babes, are recent converts of the Christian faith. It could mean new Christians, New believers are younger Christians whose sins have been forgiven for Jesus' sake. Yeah. On account of what Jesus did on Calvary, our sins are forgiven. Yeah. We're all God's dear children. Our sins stand forgiven for Jesus' sake. Forgiveness is based on what he did for our sins when he died on the cross. 
God is satisfied with Jesus. He satisfied divine justice for sin, delivering believers from the wrath of God. The little children here, I believe John is using the term little children to refer to young believers who have not been a long time in the Christian faith. He writes 13, the latter part of verse 13. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. What does it mean to know him? John employs a different word here for children. The word pantheon is used to speak of a half-grown boy or girl, a child in training, a little child under instruction. This may refer to all believers, for we are still under instruction. Although we are different levels of our spiritual growth, we are still under construction. Knowledge here is a fixed knowledge, a permanent knowledge. They have fellowship that has come from their relationship with the Father. They know the Father because they know the Son, the true nature of Jesus, the God-man, who came in the flesh. They have embraced that have not embraced the false doctrine of the Gnostic teachers had a, a warped view of Jesus' person in nature. They had Jesus wrong, but these folk have him right. Yes. They're in the fixed, permanent position. They know who he is, and they believe who he is, and stand on that truth, yes. a permanent, fixed knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. He's God's son. Yes. This life they have now... They're living the life, an active life of knowing him. A life of knowing him. A life of experiencing God. We experience God as believers. We know him more and more day by day as we walk with him. Then John writes to fathers. I write to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. Now he repeats this statement in verse 14. Fathers are the more mature believers. John writes because they have known God the Father by knowing Jesus from the beginning of the gospel being preached to them. They know who Jesus is. Their Christology is not in error. They have Jesus right. Have known is the perfect tense that theology is fixed on the Reality of the person of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. They know who he is. They believe what the apostles had said about him. They know the who-ness of Jesus. The truth on which the Christian faith stands is who Jesus is. Yeah. They have not given up. They have not been moved by Gnostic false teachers. Mm -hmm. They have stood firm in the doctrine of the Christian faith. Yeah. These fathers, mature believers, who stand firm on what God has made known through the Lord's apostles. Yeah. Then John writes to young men, 13b, I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. And 14b, I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, where the God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Remember John, Jesus said to his disciples, in the world you will have tribulation. Yeah. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Christian victory is through Jesus. Victory sealed and delivered at the cross. Young men are the vibrant, active, growing believers. Those who are growing in the Lord. In the midst of the battle, they meet the challenge of the day. Knowing this world is no friend of grace to lead us on to God. Satan, the arch enemy of our soul, does all he can to lay us low and attempt to impede our spiritual progress. The young men have proven themselves to be strong. The word iskuros, meaning power as one endowed with. It means strength to overcome the devil. It's part of salvation given to believers. Believers have the strength with the help of the Holy Spirit to overcome the evil one. Amen. What comes at believers? 
He comes from every angle. Satan knows the angles that come at us. He attacks us from every angle. In your home, on your job, in your church, in your community, in your family. He comes to you from different angles. But they are strong because the word of God abides in them, John said. Dwells in them. Holds down in them. Abides in present tense. This is what happens when God's word remains in us. Abides in us. Endures in us. God's word enhouses us. Feasting on God's word. We are to let the word of God Dwell in us richly. That's how we overcome the evil one. By the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. John writes to young men because they overcome the evil one. Satan, the wicked one. The evil one is busy through Gnostics teaching to attempt to turn them away from the faith. But they have overcome the program of the devil. They will not allow themselves to be victims to Satan's temptings. They have been victorious. They have overcome the devil. Believers are overcomers. We battle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. Remember Jesus said, his disciples, be of good cheer. Or I will overcome the world. We too are overcomers who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The old hymn, the often sung, but remains true. Yeah. Tempted and tried with, right. oft made the wonder, yeah. why it should be all the day long, while there are others living among us, never molested, though in the wrong. For the long, we'll know all about it. Yes, For the long, we understand why. Cheer up, my brother. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. John writes to those growing at different levels of spiritual growth. Regardless of where we may be spiritually, the call is never to lay back, but to always be reaching forward to what is ahead. As long as there's life in our bodies, really never are we to become contented Satisfied with where we are in our spiritual progress. Satisfied with Jesus, yes. I was satisfied with Jesus, what he did on Calvary and rose from the dead. I was satisfied and contented with Jesus, but not with me. I'm not satisfied with where I am in my spiritual progress. As I move towards Christ-likeness, the apostle Paul was never satisfied, nor can we. Like him, we press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The goal, the goal is to be with him and to be like him. I want to live above the world. Those Satan darts at me be hurled. My ears have caught the joyful sound, the sound of saints on higher ground. To hear him saying, come up. Come up higher. You're, you're too low. Yeah. Grow, evolve, grow in Christ Jesus. Yes, we possess. We must possess the want to. Right. We fall short, but we still should have the want to. Yes, we want to live above the world. Right. Those Satan darts at us as hurled. Christian maturity is reaching by to the ones who have Want to, they will continue to go forward who have the want to. You got to have the want to. If you want to, you grow. If you want to, you overcome. You got to have the want to as a believer in Christ Jesus. All of us are close to God as we want to be. I'm where I am because I want to be where I am. I have to have the want to be to grow spiritually in Christ Jesus. More often, because that's where I want to stay. But the call is the call is a grow. The call is upward call. Not to be satisfied where you are in your spiritual progress. 
but to grow in Christ Jesus. We're obligated to grow as believers. So we are saved by the mighty grace of God. So we grow as Christians, not being satisfied where we are in our spiritual progress. Never satisfied. Always reaching forward to grow more and get stronger in the Lord Jesus Christ. So here, John encouraged his readers to grow. I know where you are in your spiritual growth, but don't become satisfied there. Reach up and move forward in spiritual progress. I'm obligated as believers to grow in grace, the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not contented where I am. Not satisfied on the level I may be on, but keep going forward. As long as there's life in my body, I can keep pressing forward until we see Jesus. And one day we shall see him who died on the cross for our sin and rose from the dead for our justification. We'll see Jesus. I want to see him. Look upon his face. The one who died for me. But until then, we grow in Christ's likeness day by day. And the trials that come our way, the testings that God sends our way of us to grow. We grow through difficulties. We grow through testing. We grow through praying. We grow through meditation. We grow through the things we go through. We, we grow spiritually because these things force us back on God. All that will force you back on God. All that makes you pray is good for you and good for me. So here, John encourages his readers on different levels, different spiritual levels, to keep progressing as believers. Keep growing till Jesus comes again. He's coming. He's coming. He's on the way. Soon and very soon, the Lord shall return for his people. But until then, we press on the upper way, not contented in our spiritual progress, every day moving forward, on the road to Christ's likeness as believers in Christ Jesus. So thank you, John. Oh man, John. Your words of encouragement to the family of God. Father, we thank you for who you are and what you've done. Bless your word to the hearts and minds of your people. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we remind you they died for you on Calvary's cross, shed his blood, gave his life. Your simple childlike faith, you too may have life eternal by trusting Christ as Savior and Lord. If you have any questions about salvation, you may call the Park Avenue Church. Someone will be glad to get in touch with you about the need of salvation. upon his face there to see forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares all past home at last ever to rejoice oh I want to see oh I want to see him look upon his face there to see forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares all past home at last ever to rejoice 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 ever to rejoice rejoice ever to rejoice 
is all past. Home at last, ever to rejoice. The reading of our church covenant, having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do now, in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into this covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindreds and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, and be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant, and the principles of God's word. And now unto him who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, be power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Time for us now for the Lord's Supper. Pay ourselves the elements already at home and here. Father, we thank you for this time. Celebrate the Lord's Supper. Bless the elements. The bread symbolic of your body. The wine symbolic of your blood. We partake with thanksgiving that our minds rest on Jesus Christ who pays the price for our redemption on Calvary's cross, as we remember him. We ask all in Jesus' name. Amen. The night the Lord was betrayed, he took bread and broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. At their sup, the like man the Lord takes a cup, and this cup, the New Testament in my blood, as often as we drink this cup, it's sure about the Lord's death till he comes. May the Lord bless you and keep you throughout the day and week till we come together again. Thank you and praise you, Lord, this time of fellowship with your people. 
As we go down from this place, go with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Remembering Jesus, always remember him. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>